right, guys. It is a beautiful summer evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. It is Friday, July 8th, 2022. So let's hope I have a little more luck than last night where I did my entire rant last night and then went to upload it no sign of it but we're going to see if we have a little bit more luck here on friday since it is friday it is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant where we head over to mongabay.com to check in with rhett butler and the boys and girls to see what uh is on their minds to report on the collapse of a planet i'm glad to say that Rhett seems to have returned a little bit more to reality this week after last week's, I don't know what that was, that hopium roundup. There's a little bit of hopium in here as always, but uh, let's just get back to the little uh, footnotes of the collapse. This is where you will hear probably, good lord, how many stories that obviously will never be mentioned on the mainstream media. Wow, where have we heard this one 5,000 times before? We're gonna start out here in Thailand, where in Thailand's deep south, a fight to stop quarrying inside a global geopark. Yes, activists in southern Thailand have for years protested against plans to open a quarry in the limestone mountains Kaltokrang. Yes, the mountain sits just out just outside a UNESCO global geopark. Yes. Officials say the quarry will promote jobs and ensure a local source of construction material, I bet. But opponents say a group of quarries threaten the Geopark's UNESCO status. Take a wild guess who's going to win that one. Uh, so here we're going to go over to uh, the secretary in, to, to Pakistan, where how many times have we heard this? So I guess the plan is they're going to uh, reintroduce these uh, crocodiles, these giant crocodiles known as garials, which were hunted to extinction in Pakistan in 1985. What is that, 37 years ago or something like that, if my math is correct. So anyway, so every single crocodile in Pakistan was obliterated off the face of the planet 37 years ago. There's this tiny remnant population left in Nepal. It's actually where they're doing captive breeding of these crocodiles since they're functionally extinct in the wild. So guess where they're releasing them? Back into Pakistan where they were hunted to extinction 37 years ago when the human population was probably half of what it is now. And so, this, you know, this great plan, who can be against that, right? Uh, a key obstacle to any future crocodile transfer is the concern that Pakistan may not have done enough to change the conditions that led to the Garial's extinction there. This is called no shit, Sherlock. Everything that uh, led to the crocodile's extinction in 1985 in Pakistan is twice as bad as it was then. They're gonna go release hundreds of baby crocodiles in Pakistan, and they're going directly into the stew pot, 
and I guess they're going to be making belts and handbags out of them. This is, you know, just consigning all of these baby crocodiles to death. Uh, anyway, so we have reports from two of these conferences. Uh, <laughs> yes disappointment and a few wins yes for indigenous leaders at the Nairobi biodiversity talks I love it a a biodiversity conference in Kenya yes negotiations in Nairobi Kenya for the new Global agreement to preserve and protect nature ended last week. Yes, but parties have not yet come to an agreement over the final draft. Do you think so? Disappointed by the progress made it the latest biodiversity meeting after two years of blah, blah, blah. Disappointed after two years of blah, 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 uh, you know, they, they've pretty much uh, thrown in the towel. Yes, I, I love this. The inclusion of gender equality made it. Yes, do you, do you think so? Uh, <laughs> uh, Anyway, guys, just another round of blah, blah, blah. And speaking of another round of blah, 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 the latest uh, joke, UN Ocean Conference ends with promises. Yes. Uh, anyway... Okay, while nations, NGOs, and other entities made hundreds of conservation commitments, meaning absolute, non-binding, voluntary commitments, otherwise known as greenwashing, blah, 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 lying out their teeth, okay? Make no mistake what conservation commitments means. It means nothing. It is a pack of lies. They have no intention of keeping any of these. Every one of these commitments is going down the toilet. We all know it. Everybody at the place knows it. Yes. Uh... Despite all that, experts say there is still a lot of work to be done to protect our oceans. Do you think so? One more UN talk down the toilet. Let's make, let's cut the crap. Okay, guys, it was a complete, total joke failure, greenwashing, kick the can down the road, tell the little LD lefty greenies what they want to hear, and keep right on about uh, deep sea mining, deep sea trawling, uh, whatever. All right. I don't believe that history is being made. Uh, we are just reporting, was it last week or two weeks ago, talking about there has never been, in Brazil, there has never been one single prosecution of one of these indigenous land defenders uh, being prosecuted. So I guess they have found their sacrificial lamb, so uh, they no longer can, uh, Manga Bay can no longer report, what was it, 234 cases, zero prosecutions, but okay, I guess since that story was, uh, was released, for the very first time in Brazil, 
the killing of an indigenous land defender is expected to be tried before a federal jury. All right, I'm going to make a prediction here. This guy will never see a night in jail. This, uh, this murderer will never see a night in jail. This could send an important leak could set an important legal precedent for trying those responsible for the recent killings of British journalist Dom Phillips and Brazilian indigenous rights defender Bruno Pereira. Uh, yeah, it's probably uh, there might be some truth into that because you know now they're killing honky journalists from England. Which, which made the mainstream, all over the mainstream media, so 234 Brazilian land defenders over the years shot and killed and everything else. Never a mention in the mainstream media, one honky from England gets wrapped up and gets a bullet through his head and suddenly people are paying attention. Imagine that. Okay, what is going on? You know, uh, Red has not been talking about Bozo Nero for quite a while. You know, Bozo Nero is up for re-election, so we're going to look at his record. Here's another aspect of the Bozo Nero environmental uh, record. Under Bozo Nero policy, invaders seize control of 250,000 hectares of indigenous land. Uh, on April 16th, Brazil's federal agency for indigenous affairs issued a regulation allowing private properties to be registered inside indigenous lands that have not yet been demarcated or officially recognized. Since then, that was uh, two years ago uh, in 2020, since then, in the last two years, the federal government has certified and registered more than 250,000 hectares, otherwise known as 620,000 acres. Uh, in the territories of 49 indigenous peoples across the country. Do you think so? The uh, new regulation, the, the regulation, now the two-year-old regulation, is part of the Jair Bozo Nero's administration's wider refusal to demarcate indigenous lands and has resulted in, in an increase in invasions even in states with regularized territories. Do you think so? Okay, you will not believe this, guys, that Myanmar, I call it Burma, Burma's wildlife trade remains opaque. Do you think so? Okay, what is going on with hazardous mine tailings dams? Yes, we're looking just at one case in Madagascar where a mine tailings dam has failed at least twice this year sending hazardous wastewater into a lagoon relied on by locals for drinking and subsistence fishing and killing hundreds of fish and of course mining conglomerate Rio Tinto refuses to accept responsibility for the dead fish or the water pollution and this is not an isolated incident 
tailing dams are failing with increasing frequency and severity all over the world. And uh, as, uh, you know, as the big green lie of the, uh, of the Green New Deal rolls in, mining, uh, good Lord, I've, I've heard everything is going to increase by three to ten times between now and 2050. So between now and 2050, there are going to be three to ten times as many of these uh, of these tailing stems, which you know basically are these little uh, thumb in the dike to hold back uh, millions of gallons of toxic stew, so the mining companies can get in there, get the goods, get the hell out, and then leave behind this uh, this environmental catastrophe waiting to happen and when the and when the dam goes which it will thousands and thousands of these things are, are are being built every year every damn one of them is going to collapse eventually nobody talking about it you hear the word mine tailings dams and watch the party evaporate. Okay, let's take a look into the world's embattled kelp forest. <clears throat> kelp forests grow along more than one quarter of the world's coastlines and are among the planet's most biodiverse ecosystems, but these critical habitats are disappearing due to warming oceans and other human impacts, sudden recent wipeouts of vast kelp forest along the coastlines of California and Tasmania highlighted how little is known about protecting or restoring these vital marine ecosystems. Yeah, that is kiss goodbye, the kelp forest, and everything that depends on them. Gee, take a wild guess. Uh, tree plantations in Patagonia are the site of wildfires and land disputes. For Decades, Argentina has subsidized the clearing of native forest and planting exotic species, primarily pine trees, on land often claimed by indigenous peoples. Yes, this uh, ended up one of these guys getting shot dead by these pine growers. Uh, pine plantations increase wildlife, wildfire risks, blah, 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 do you think so? Okay, we have been talking about how the United Nations supporting aquaculture, otherwise known as fish farming, as a major part of their sustainable development goals. Yes, fish farming practices come under scrutiny amid surge in aquaculture. Yes, a recent investigative report claims to reveal for the first time the poor conditions including the mistreatment of fish in some Indonesian fish farms. Imagine that, an Indonesian fish farmer mistreating fish. Hmm. Uh, production of farmed fish grew by 527% worldwide from 1990 to 2018. Production of wild-caught fish during that same period rose by 14% 
which in some ways is even worse than the 527 percent. Of course, I don't know if it's included in that 527 percent. Take a guess on the number one food source for farmed fish. It is wild fish. Do you get it? The way you farm fish, you put fish in a cage, then you go out and catch wild fish to feed the farmed fish. So when you're eating a farmed fish, you're eating a fish that has been eating wild fish. If you just ate the damn wild fish, you see what I'm saying? All right, here we go again with the Indonesian haze season beginning as dry season starts in Indonesia, risk of fires and haze begins. Okay, guys, this next one you will never believe. Once again, this is why I depend on Rhett Butler to educate me. <clears throat> This is not coming out of Southeast Asia. This one's coming out of Africa. Imagine that. Although the same is true for Southeast Asia. Rubber used by leading European tire makers linked to forest loss in Africa. Hmm. A new report investigates deforestation and land rights abuse allegations in Central and Western Africa by corporations that supply top European tire makers like Michelin and Continental. Yes. Uh, the EU is home to the world's top tire manufacturers and rubber imports are currently not subject to the European nation's deforestation regulations. Between 2000 and 2020, 200 square miles of forest was likely destroyed to make way for industrial rubber plantations across six African countries which together exported over $500 million worth of rubber to the EU in 2020 alone. There you go. Okay, here's this old debate. I'm not going to get into it about ecotourism uh, saving the planet. Uh, you know, this whole ecotourism thing, it is a double-edged sword like everything else. Uh, anyway, okay, the UN is on it. Net zero commitments must include more anti-deforestation policies. The UN tells the private sector, many corporations with net zero commitments have made little tangible progress against tropical deforestation. Hmm, do you think so? Many of the companies, even the ones that have implemented other net zero commitments, have fallen short on deforestation, meaning that their carbon footprint may end up being larger than they have. Than they have. Than they hope. All right. Anyway, guys, the uh, the lightning bug show is uh is uh cranking up i gotta get out to enjoy the lightning bugs while i still can so i'm just gonna touch on a few all right here is uh the uh 
the mega monsoon in Bangladesh. Gee, imagine this. Construction begins on controversial water project inside Lake Malawi National Park. The government of Malawi has initiated construction work for a water project inside Lake Malawi National Park despite sustained protest from conservationists who say the project threatens the park's UNESCO recognized biodiversity. Yes, eyewitness reports say construction vehicles are currently blasting rocks, bulldozing boulders, uprooting trees, ripping through a pristine forest. There you go. All right, what is going on with the hyacinth macaw? Take a wild guess. Habitat loss and climate change send hyacinth macaw reeling back into endangered status. Yes. Uh, so it was on the list, taken off the list, and now it's going back on the list. Uh, conservation experts attribute the bird's most recent decline to <clears throat> loss of its habitat due to fires in the Pantanal wetlands and ongoing deforestation in the Amazon. Climate change is all poses a serious threat. So it used to be, you know, the, the wild, lot the parrot smugglers. So they got that a little under control and now it's the old, uh, you know, the number one habitat destruction. Okay, you will not believe that Peru's Amazon rainforest is threatened by an ecosystem of environmental crime. Yes, while Brazil attracts more attention, deforestation is also substantial in the Peruvian Amazon, where forest clearing is on the rise. Uh, these uh, guys writing this column Right, that quote, the scale and breadth of the assault currently underway in Peru's rainforest is, quote, unprecedented. They chalk up much of the damage to resource pirates. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys. Uh, there, the lightning bugs are cranking up, and uh, I gotta get out of here. This is going on and on. Wow, imagine this. World Bank approves $200 million loan for industrial agriculture in Brazil, Cerrado. Wow, imagine that. Uh, uh, gee, Amazon rainforest activist under threat in Brazil plans to flee his home. I bet he does. Anyway, guys, I realize I'm talking to myself. And the uh, lightning bug show is cranking up at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I have to get out there and enjoy the lightning bug show while I still can. Because there's nothing else to do. Bye, guys. This little dog, you're not going to enjoy the lightning bug show. You're going to stay in here. Ah, oh, Jesus. Why do I do this?